about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Success is not just what you do. Success is what you attract by who you are becoming. More than what you do is your becoming. Daniel 11.32, but the people that do know, it starts with knowledge. The people that do know their God, they shall be. So knowledge, transformation, and then execution. Knowledge, transformation, they shall be strong. Then in that state, they will do exploits. There is a mindset that you can have and you will never cross 100 members 200 members we're not saying crowd is everything there is a mindset for a global ministry there is a mindset for territorial dominion not just an anointing the anointing comes in honor to the belief system your assignment in this conference is to obtain grace from god to begin to transit to inculcate superior belief systems I didn't come from a background that would afford me cheaply to have these belief systems. I had to begin to outsource it through passion. The proof of passion is pursuit. When you really are passionate, you will pursue. Are we together? Jeremiah 6 verse 16 says to stand in the way and to ask for that ancient path. And it says when you have found it, walk in it is a good way. And it says you will find rest for your soul. Man of God is not always a demonic attack. Mindsets are doorways and gateways that allow the devil to oppress us. The only gateway that gives the Holy Ghost and demons access to your life is your mindset. The Bible says Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him, the Bible says, who is able. So his ability is not in doubt. He's able to... Do exceedingly abundantly all that we ask or think. You've listened to my message on this wise, some of you. God listens to both your asking and your thinking. Your mindset is also a prayer warrior. It's not only your mouth that prays. Your mind is also asking God to do things. Your prayer can be saying, God lift me. And your mindset says, God forget about it. The mouth does not know what he's saying. And the Bible says, God is able to honor both. What we do or think. There could be a problem with our thinking. A lavish, respectfully speaking, Western thinking is not transformation. Your transformation only happens when you begin to align your understanding referenced to scripture. Not referenced to another region that is technologically advanced than your current nation. No. You can have another mindset that is higher than your current mindset. But that does not mean you are transformed. Transformation is reference from scripture and the character of the Christ. So if you are transiting into something else that we cannot find a bearing from scripture, you may be moving, but you are not being transformed. There are people who travel to regions that are maybe more superior than Nigeria and they learn the culture there and they return back believing they are transformed. No, sociologically speaking, those regions may seem to have a, a more 
a more consistent approach as far as its relation to scripture is concerned but it may not directly honor scripture when we talk about transformation we are not meaning embrace a mindset that is higher than a village mindset no we are saying conform to scripture as reference there is god's modus operandi there is a way he walks are we together transformation you will attract realities that are consistent with your belief systems you will attract relationships that are consistent with your belief systems you will attract opportunities that are consistent with your belief systems where do great people come from they are attracted by holding the mindset you see there is every there are physical blessings allocated by default to mindsets you don't choose things you choose mindsets the mindsets choose the possibilities that come you want good friends you want the contact in your phone to change you don't do it by looking for people manually no you do it by looking for the mindset that reflects the relationships you are looking for the moment that mindset changes your contact will begin to change in honor of it how many of you have given someone a shirt that you've used for a long time clean shirt you used it for two years we didn't even know that the shirt was two years old suddenly you give someone maybe a house help or someone and in two weeks the person's mindset starts telling on the shirt you can buy a car for someone in two weeks the car will start looking like the man's thinking you can give someone a house this is the fallacy of empowering people without transformation sooner or later you will see this is why no matter how blessed you are train your children they are not empowered you will give them things that will look like them with all due respect keep a security man for instance who works in a company and would complain that i'm earning only thirty thousand or twenty thousand and my boss is there receiving a million or two million naira what is he doing sipping tea and sitting under ac i always give a challenge switch them switch them put the boss at the gate for two weeks and put the security man in the office let me tell you the first thing he would do most likely with all due respect and honor not everybody but generally speaking most likely he will steal he will go to the fridge first not the files what does he have to do with files to him what are files the contracts that's none of his business he will pack something in the fridge quickly he will enjoy the ac to reaffirm that he's there in three days the office starts looking like him it's dirty it's unkept he will use a file containing a million dollar contract to help and pour and pour uh, hold granites that is coming from the cover with it now let's go to the boss who is at the gate the first thing he's going to do is how to reduce physical energy in opening that gate he will last with someone to automate the movement of the gate because his health is a priority for him he can't stand in the sun from morning till night opening and closing it will affect him so he will say how much will it take and he will tell the person i don't have money to give you but let's get into partnership the rewards that come from this i will automate it and begin to charge the people a stipend that's how i'll start paying you his mindset very soon nobody will come to that office again everybody's problem will be stopped will be solved at the gate so who are you really paying a man or a mindset are we blessed listen i wish i were lying i would have just said i'm sorry but what i'm saying is true and powerful philippians 4 8 finally brethren the bible says whatsoever things are true honest just pure lovely of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things don't say i come from port Harcourt. no we've been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation there are very healthy aspects of culture moral excellence respect but there are destructive superstitious aspects of culture that keep pegging us and not even just because we're educated to be educated means to be enlightened along a field of endeavor 
it does not generally mean that you have the understanding for living are we blessed there is a mindset you have that will make you will never have more than two million naira in your account if it's more than that your mindset interprets it as an error events will happen and it will reduce it back to the amount that looks like your mindset then you will rest have you seen people like that Ten thousand. I'm not. I'm not. We are talking. Are you? Are you understand now? We are not marketing flesh here. Ten thousand, fifty thousand, hundred thousand, and then your mind says that's your realm. Suddenly a miracle happens. Two million, and your mindset beeps. It says something is faulty, because this man is sustaining more than the mindset allows. Events will happen through carelessness to reduce you back to that realm. So when you are saying God lift me, it's not just impartation you must grow you can grow to a level where your current house will leave you it will push you out you don't have to say i need a new house no just grow you grow to a point where it becomes unfair for you to live there you don't have to fake it just grow a time will come the house will start speaking to you a time will come your phone will start speaking to you a time will come your car will start speaking to you not by you wanting to move just grow growth is the real key to success your becoming is greater than your doing do from a standpoint of becoming and you will truly be excellent are we together my time is almost up can you spare me five minutes and we're done are you getting blessed in this morning service I want you to live angry knowing that I'm I have to go forward and now it's not just shouting and say Lord I'm going forward amen mm -mm. oh I see what I'm doing wrong now many years ago I was tired of this finance thing because it was really really you know that thing can cripple you no matter what God has called you to do if if you don't have resources I hate poverty for one reason not just because it's bad or it's associated to the devil it's because of the limitation that it causes as far as your advancement and the purposes of god if poverty were neutral i won't have a problem with it now i saw i went to study wealthy people and when i got their books i became angry i wanted to find out what businesses they were doing so i would do it but all what they were writing there is attitudes behave well mindsets and i said how bad these people you are not being fair you are already blessed you want to help people and the focus is on mindsets tell us the truth what are you doing what did you do that made you a billionaire how foolish i was they were giving their very best this is what many people do when they see wealthy people what are you doing just tell me so that i'll do it too you will do it and still fail because they are doing it from a mindset the real miracle next time you are mentioning the miracles of the bible mention the miracle of understanding it is a miracle you want to be a man of god that god gives you there are anointings over assemblies there are anointings over cities there are anointings over regions there are anointings over nations there are anointings over continents all of these anointings are not just governed by the will of god they are governed by levels of superior beliefs god cannot give you an anointing over nations and continents when there is a belief system in you one message coming from that poor belief system can bring trouble to the body of christ from a continental standpoint so god will not give you that kind of anointing you do not have the flexibility you have not learned leadership at the level that can galvanize people from several cultures you cannot have that anointing are you blessed hmm. number four what is the fourth key go in this your might key number four the power of value and productivity the power of value and productivity mark chapter 1 please and verse 35 we made reference to this yesterday whilst we were discussing church growth at the pastor's conference the bible says jesus having done all the things he did in the preceding verses in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place the bible says and there prayed next verse and simon 
and they that were with him followed after him and when they had found him here's what they said they said unto him all men seek for you oh may that be your testimony when men seek for you they don't come alone they come with everything that represents them they come with their achievements they don't seek for you just with their bodies or their eyes they come with their wealth they come with their honor they come with their loyalty they come with the leverage of their sacrifices they come with their relationships their connections all blessings come from God through men to men men are the bridge for our rising and our advancement you have to learn this these are irrefutable principles of advancement you have to be valuable you know you are valuable by who seeks you if kings look for you you are valuable enough I made up my mind as a covenant to myself and my destiny that in every area God would have me serve his purposes I would give myself no rest till I rise to a point of competence and value value what does it mean to be valuable to be valuable means it's a measure of your usefulness is the it's a measure of your ability to provide solutions that are needed and useful as far as a dispensation is concerned to be productive means to sustain the ability to be valuable refine that value and turn that value into products and services that are needed and useful serve to a targeted consumer base that's what you call business is simply a channel for dispensing value intelligently no most people believe men of god don't know any other thing aside from preaching the holy ghost did not come to waste his time in our lives are we blessed you're not valuable you can pray in tongues you can do the things that you have to do you will be greatly limited in this life all men seek for thee that's the power of value all men seek for thee all men seek for thee exodus chapter 4 please let's look at verse 2 we're about to pray exodus chapter 4 i hope god is speaking to us hmm. when moses had an encounter with the lord one of the questions that the lord asked him was moses what is in your hand and he said a rod verse 3 he says cast it to the ground he casted it it became a serpent and moses fled before it then verse 4 the bible says and the lord said unto moses put forth your hand and take it by the tail he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand when you read subsequent verses for the sake of time verse 7 particularly go to verse 7 please for the sake of time and he said yes when he put it he became you know we plucked it out from his bosom the hand became this and that and later on he told him he said this rod now you hold on to it this is the rod wherewith you will do signs and wonders signs and wonders when he got to the sea the red sea it was that same rod that he brought out that parted the red sea in second kings chapter 4 when you read the first 10 verses just right for reference the bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet who was in debt and they were about to take the creditors were about to take her children as collateral she cries to a prophet who tells her what do you have in your house she said nothing except except and the oil was listening to her you call me except is the container that made me in this condition i am not small the oil was sitting in the house and saying, Madam, you have the opportunity to be so great, but you have confined me in a little container. The prophet said, I know what the problem is. Don't borrow oil again. You have enough. Go and borrow vessels. Expand your capacity. It says, borrow not a few. When she borrowed, she brought it. As she began to change the container, the oil started expanding to assume the container. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. Are we blessed make up your mind to be valuable how do you know that you are valuable when you start serving the kings in your territory 
if the kings have not called you you are not valuable enough i guarantee you in any business you are doing do not rest until you serve the kings and the nobles not by faking it and some of these things people do don't fake what can be real pay the price and grow value apostle i'm a master chef i'm a cook who is patronizing you when you serve kings you will reward you will receive the rewards that the palace gives everything you are doing someone is doing it the reward comes from who he is serving not just what he is doing Many years ago, I went to a very nice hotel and we wanted a, I think it was a bottle of minerals or coffee. And I had an evil report as to how much they said that thing was. Ah. I said, I can't believe this. What in the world is this? Why should I take a, a, a I mean, come on. When you can go out and just trek to a shop as hey, ace, Give me coffee and cup give me i'm buying cup i'm buying spoon everything there plus the water and heater you can buy everything and make the tea there you are not just taking tea you're paying for the atmosphere because whoever sees you there assumes you have transited to their level so he will relate with you based on their level that's what you are paying for i was glad when they said unto me see why it's good to come to church you come and learn life applicable lessons you can use this to your company go back tomorrow and call your staff and say look we've been recycling this level of profit i had my pastor teach after this conference we're going to change it now listen to me gentlemen all these faded uniforms they are going out of this office we are going to redefine ourselves we are going to paint that old building and start looking like our future indeed and with every sense of seriousness we are going to introduce ethics and practices in this firm that reflect the kind of people we want to come excellence is a language there are people who can speak it if you if i speak yoruba now there are a few people who hear what i'm saying excellence is a language there is a tribe that understands that language value and productivity second king seven we have to stop i'll just give you the last two points and then we'll pray another time when god grants grace remind me that i didn't finish the lecture <laughs> amen and amen first king seven thirteen first king seven thirteen shilakatos kabrende ketibalakatuya a construction project is going on here the building of the temple and solomon sent and fetched a gentleman called hiram out of tyre the then business hub next verse the bible gives us a very pathetic description about this young man so what was it in him that made the king to send for him the bible says he was a widow's son of the tribe of naphtali and his father was a man of tyre a walker in brass and he was filled with wisdom understanding and cunning to walk in all works of brass and he came to the king and wrought all of his works he came to the king even though his background was that he was a widow he made up his mind that i will get wisdom i will get understanding i will transit to a point where if solomon is asking for the best they will call my name this is not an unhealthy competition but make up your mind in the name of jesus christ that when they are looking for people who are serving the purposes of the kingdom in ministry in business that with all humility and and to the glory of the name of the lord you will be called as a reference as one who truly represents the purposes of god if you're with me say amen, amen. the enemy of your next level is where you are not where you left where you are you can be so satisfied with where you are that there is no need to move forward forward thinkers champions those who continue to 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 trailblaze and those who continue to advance there are people who part themselves but not for too long when they part themselves for a few minutes they say look we have to move forward 
can I tell you, nobody claps for you for the same thing twice. Once you receive the applause for this level, it's over. If you remain there, you can be sure that you'll be starved of the applause that come with a life that is achieving. You must move forward. You must go forward. Write this down. The next key. Oh dear. If I knew, I would have started with this one. But I pray that God will grant us grace. The power of relationships. Oh, ministers so need to hear this. But I have to just mention it. The power of relationships. Genesis 1 and verse 1 to 4. And then the last is the prophetic advantage. These are the keys. These last two, they are really, really very important. But another time. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's look at one scripture and we pray. Genesis chapter 12, the first four verses. As we prepare to pray. We will rise in your name. Adonai. You reign on That's what is happening to you. I will rise in your name. Adonai. The Lord said to Abraham, get thee out of your country, your kindred, your father's house, unto a land that I will show you. Next verse. We are showing the power of relationships. And I will make of thee a great nation. It says, I will bless you, make your name great, you will be a blessing. Verse 3. The Bible says, I will bless them that bless you, curse him that cursed thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Read verse 4 if you are a christian ready one to read so abraham departed as the lord had spoken uh-huh and lot went with him stop god did not call lot he called abraham and spoke a prophetic word that as you obey me and lot had it he said who is this talking to you i am going with you 13 verse 5 let me borrow two minutes my spirit is fired up 13 and verse 5 i have to land on this note the bible says and also lot which went with abraham had what he was not called he was not sent he only followed someone who was moving forward and the bible says as a result he also had flocks and herds and tents next verse and the land was not able to bear them both the one that was called and the one who connected through relationship they had such abundance and influence their substance was so great so that they could not dwell together watch this a lesson that i will end with and there was a strife between the herdsmen of adam's of abram's cattle and the herdmen of lord's cattle and the canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt in the land verse 8 tragic thing and abraham said unto lot let there be no strife i pray thee between me and thee and between my herdmen and thy herdmen for we be brethren nine it says it's not the whole land before thee separate thyself lot had become so great he was not wise to discern that the reason why he increased was not because the anointing was on him was because he had a relationship and now abraham said since you could not mentor your people to know why the blessing comes to you let there be no strife you can go separate yourself i pray thee from me if thou will take the left hand i will go to the right if thou will take the right i will go to the left abraham is saying it does not matter is what is on me for you oh anyone help that man please help him help him please verse 10 and lot the foolishness of those who follow let this be a lesson men of god there are times that god connects you to people 
not just as a mentor not just as a father there are covenant relationships that god brings you through your lifting is connected to it you must look beyond the weaknesses and the limitations of the people and stay there because your covenant alignment is how you are blessed don't now think because you are wearing a gucci he's wearing a gucci you preach is preaching your prophesying is prophesying champions know what they did that made them great they will tell you go but when they tell you go you are not going alone you are going with a plethora of troubles the bible says look at the first time he was going to make a decision alone outside of the influence of his relationship and see how foolish that means his wealth was not a proof of his wisdom it was a proof of his relationship now here is a man who prospered you would think the wisdom was his own now he was left to make a decision alone and here's where he chose and lord lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the lord destroyed sodom and gomorrah even as the garden of eden and like the land of egypt and you know as he has come to zoa next verse please quickly lord chose the plain chose him all the plain of jordan and lord journeyed east and they separated themselves from one and from the other verse 12 the bible says and abraham dwelled in the land of canaan and lot went dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards by the time abraham would come to rescue lot where was he he went to settle near trouble he went to settle near pain he went to settle near deception because he could not see him. but thank god for the power of fathers and leaders you know the thing with fathers is that there is grace to take a lot of nonsense even when they tell you go away look at the prodigal son he didn't meet his father in the house when he was leaving the father too left his house they met on the way for some of you this may be a message god has placed a man of god above you when you came to this church you probably had nothing but you kept listening to the word now you have a great car now you have a great firm be careful do not make the mistake of lot this is not human worship is how the kingdom functions and lot went with him go in this your might rise up on your feet prayer point number one now that you know these things it says happy are you if you do them lift your voice and obtain grace from god grace to walk in keeping with these truths grace to walk in keeping with these truths a man of god is praying a leader in this house is praying go in this thy might go on the strength of this information do exploits. Shika ta pranda katos kete bele kete pras. Shile bara su kete pranda kete ba. Your life is changing. You will never be the same. The power of vision. You will never be the same. The power of light. High level spiritual illumination. Go ahead and pray. The power of a transformed mind sustaining superior belief systems the power of value and productivity the power of destiny connections strategic relationships and alliances hallelujah the last key you may write it no time to explain but it's called the prophetic advantage hosea chapter 12 and verse 3 as i speak over your life Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Hosea 12 and 13. And by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. The prophetic advantage is a system of advantage built into God's economy to help people rise. Prophecy is powerful. It can create and program possibilities over the life of an individual i stand in faith with pastor larry over the house on the rock port Arcot, over the south south ministers here present and following online over the body of christ within this region and in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god 
I declare that anything that will not let you go, I declare that it goes down now. It goes down now in the name of Jesus. I speak to you. Everyone who has been ordained to hold your hands and lift you in the next season of your life in ministry and in business, I speak to the north, the south, the east and west of this region. I command them to appear now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me? Everything that has died or is dying in your life, I send a prophetic word to that which is dead. Talita Kumi, come back to life now. Come back to life now. When Paul and Silas prayed and sang, there was an earthquake. And the Bible says, and all doors open not some doors i want to open doors by the spirit of grace i stand by the unction of him that holds the key of david who opens a door that no man shuts and shuts a door that no man's open every door needed to be open in this season for your destiny for ministry that has been shot by witchcraft shot by men systems and structures we speak to those doors and those gates a father be open a father be open a father doors of ministry doors of family doors of business a father be open in the name of jesus help them please let me declare restoration some of you have lost money some of you have lost relationships you have lost things you've lost destiny opportunities the bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore i come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic i declare whatever has left you i call it by name and i command it to return back to your destiny please believe return back to your destiny hallelujah now listen to me there are two people in the bible who solved problems and were forgotten one of them was joseph he solved the problem of the wine presser he said please when you go to the king tell him i'm not here because i was supposed to be here and he forgot him the next person was mordecai he saved the life of the king and yet nothing happened but my bible says that night could not the king sleep and the king said bring me the chronicles they opened a book of remembrance many of you have helped people you prayed for them you advised them you supplied value you were part of the lifting and the rising of many and they have forgotten about you i stand by the spirit of grace and prophecy tonight let the book of remembrance be open for you open for your family open for your ministry in the name of jesus we're wrapping up hear me exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 the bible says and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty there is a grace for favor there truly is a grace for favor Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the B part says and Esther obtained favor favor works with the power of sight she obtained favor in the sight of how many all them that looked upon her verse 17 not even the king could resist this anointing the Bible says and the king loved Esther more than all the women she obtained grace and favor in his sight and he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Esther I pray for you the Esther anointing the oil that Haggai gave Esther to rub on her body for one year before she would stand before Ahasuerus may that grace come upon your life now May that grace come upon your ministry now. Hallelujah. 
one time Saul the son of Kish had their donkey missing and he took his servant and they began to journey to look for Samuel to look for the donkey they could not find the donkey and they said there is a holy man of God and when they came and he met this strange prophet called Samuel Samuel said rise up and I will tell you what is in your heart as soon as Saul saw Samuel the donkey started going back home when he met him he said is it not because the Lord has anointed and ordained you to be captain over his army he said three signs that you have been anointed number one that which was missing that you've been looking for is now restored number two when you are passing you will see three men who are holding bread they will salute you and they will give it to you number three you will come to the garrison of the Philistines and the Spirit of God will come upon you and you will prophesy let me declare to you again everything that has left you you've tried to look for it you could not find it like prophet Samuel I stand here on this exalted altar and I declare return back and see it waiting for you number two the kind of honor you have never seen listen you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred upon you by another honor is a grace he told Moses call Joshua in whom the spirit is on and anoint him he said take some of your honor and place upon him honor is transferable in the name that is above all names shame and reproach that has plagued you and your family for a long time I stand in agreement with pastor and we declare take the mantle of honor upon your life take the mantle of honor let shame and reproach come to hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you